This is the tibialis posterior assessment OSCE station um, and this comprises as a, of a non-weight bearing and a weight bearing assessment of tibialis posterior tendon. So tendon path courses posterior to medial malleolus. It's the closest tendon to the medial malleolus as it passes through the tarsal tunnel uh, and then it comes and it inserts into the navicular tuberosity and medial cuneiform as its main points of insertion although it does have slips into pretty much the whole of the rest of the tarsus. Uh, and that's why it's such an important structure in foot and ankle, um, because it, it plays a really big role in gait mechanics, in non-weight bearing mechanics as well, as well as uh, stability and maintaining the structure of the medial longitudinal arch. So the relevance of this is essentially you'll see a lot of tib post pathology or you'll see a lot of tib post dysfunction contributing to pathology. So when tibialis posterior doesn't do its job of either eccentrically decelerating pronation or eversion, stabilizing the medial longitudinal arch or resupinating the foot um, so it can become a rigid lever for propulsion, then lots of other structures can be impacted by that. So it's very useful to be able to ascertain is the tib post itself actually pathological, i.e. is it causing pain, discomfort, and is that through the tendon path or into its insertion, um, because there's slightly different potential mechanisms for injury there. Uh, and then being able to ascertain its function. So the tib post might not be painful uh, upon our non-weight bearing and weight bearing assessments, but we might be able to see that there's some um, dysfunction or insufficiency in its capability to actually fulfill its role, uh, in which case then it can become a big contributory factor to a number of other pathologies. It can cause lateral ankle pain, it can cause um, sinus tarsi syndrome, it can cause plantar fasciitis, it can cause issues with the first met foul joint, uh, and the list goes on. So it's very useful for you to be able to accurately and effectively assess for function and symptoms within this tendon. For tibialis posterior assessment OSCE station, uh, we have two parts. The first part will tell you to perform a non-weight bearing assessment of tibialis posterior strength on both feet. So you will do it on both feet. You don't have to pick left or right, already an easy station. So the first thing that we're gonna do uh, is assess with palpation. So we're gonna palpate through the tib post tendon working posterior to medial malleolus through the tarsal tunnel. Uh, and we're gonna track around to main point of insertion at navicular tuberosity and medial cuneiform uh, and see if the patient gets any discomfort at any of these points. Following on from that, once we've got an idea and appreciation of the patient's pain level and tolerance, then we're gonna look at active range of motion. So you can perform this in a couple of ways, but if your patient actually has um, the motor skill to perform it, we're gonna put the patient in a dorsiflexed and everted position, and then we're gonna ask them to push down and in, so through plantar flexion and inversion. So we're gonna start from there, and you're gonna push down and in like that against me. Good, off you go, good, push, 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 push. Good, much you can, much you can, good, good, good. Any pain? No. Perfect. So we're going to check to see if there's any discomfort throughout that arc of motion and our patient wonderfully does not have any pain. If they struggle with that more complex movement, then what we can do is just put them into a plant a flex position to bias the load to tib post away from tib ant and then ask them just to turn the foot in. So if you just turn the foot in against me, good, much you can, much you can, much you can, good, good, good. Any pain? No. Good, perfect. And then we're going to report our findings to the assessor. So let them know that there is or isn't pain and at what point there is or isn't pain. Uh, and then make just some brief commentary on the level of strength so that the patient's able to push and overpower the clinician uh, or if there's marked weakness or if they're only able to do this through uh, an active range of motion without external force or pressure. Part two. <laughs> uh, so that's, we're gonna do this on both feet, so assume I've done the same thing on the, on the right foot. Uh, but part two is the weight bearing assessment. 
So for the weight bearing assessment, we're going to ask our patient to stand down. If you could stand down for me and face away from us uh, and hang on to the wall or the door in this instance. So this isn't a stability check. We're not looking to see how stable the patient is. This is a, a functional check and we want to specifically bias the load to tip post. So we want the patient to be balanced. We don't want them to be freestanding. So to begin with, can you just come up onto your tiptoes for me? Good. So again, any pain? No. Perfect. So they've got no pain. If they do, we'll ask them where the pain is, but you can see that there's nice calcaneal inversion that's occurring. Um, if we look at this side arm, then we can also see that there's some windless mechanism that's being induced here. So we can see that there's no rigid flat foot uh, that might be associated with later stage tip post pathologies. Good, relax for me. Now I'm going to ask you to stand on one foot, hang on to the wall still, and then come up onto your tiptoes. Good. So again, we can see that there's that frontal plane movement. We can see there's calcaneal inversion. There's no pain. No. Perfect. Relax. And then you're going to perform the same on the other foot for me. Good. So we're comparing each side. Good. Relax for pain, discomfort, and function. So does one side calcaneal invert, the other doesn't? For example, in this instance, our, our wonderful model has perfect function on both sides. So common mistakes with tibialis posterior assessment. Uh, the first big mistake, uh, and uh, it's a big mistake across the board of your undergrad and undergraduate and postgraduate lives, uh, is not knowing your anatomy. So if you don't know your anatomy, it's gonna make it very difficult for you to locate and palpate the tendon. Uh, and there's a, there is a difference between knowing your anatomy in anatomy books and knowing your surface anatomy. So you need to be able to find where the tib post is on the patient, even if you understand that it runs posterior to medial malleolus and it runs through the tarsal tunnel and it inserts into navicular medial cuneiform, you need to be able to actually identify and locate these on a real live person. Um, your next common mistakes is not talking to the patient uh, and not asking them about pain during movements um, and being specific about where the pain is. So sometimes you'll find that patients might give you a positive pain reaction, i.e. oh yeah no it does hurt when I do that, but the pain might be in a different location. If the pain is lateral ankle then that's telling us something different uh, and it's no longer a positive test for tib post active intolerance. Uh, it's probably telling us more about the perineals being intolerant to uh, being stretched, so that inversion movement. So be specific about is there pain, if so, where is that pain? Um, the next kind of common mistakes are more for our weight bearing assessment and these will be where students or clinicians will ask their patient to undertake their tiptoe raise freestanding. Um, it no longer specifically looks to bias the load uh, through an active functional test. You're testing more balance and proprioception alongside tolerance through contraction of our target structure, in this instance, tib post, um, or its function. So just because they don't get any calcaneal inversion or can't perform a double limb tiptoe raise doesn't necessarily mean that this is a, uh, a negative finding. It might just mean they're unbalanced and unstable. So make sure they're hanging on to something when they perform this particularly for when you undertake your single limb tiptoe raise. Uh, and then the last thing is being able to make commentary on the frontal plane range of motion. The tiptoe raise test is fairly non-specific because there's lots of plantar flexors in foot and ankle. So you can use it as a test for a number of different things. When we're looking at tip post specifically, because we understand its function as a plantar flexor and an inverter, it's not can they come up into end range plantar flexion, it's is there that frontal range calcaneal inversion? Because otherwise, if they can just come up into end range plantar flexion, that tells us their plantar flexors work. What we're looking for is the frontal plane calcaneal inversion, and that's what lets us know that tib post is functioning well.